The Mickim Revelation by Richard Lee Mickim Jr. In reality number 7, Earth year 2020, begins the age of peace, prosperity, equality, and self-empowerment. There shall be truth, clear vision, understanding, and personal dream realizations for all who seek it. This action is in full force and effect. So be it, and so it already is. The God Power Philosophy This philosophy is the greatest philosophy that's ever been created. There's only four points in this philosophy. Once you learn the four points, you will be fearless, ultra-confident, and unstoppable. Okay, we've already covered the philosophy points one and two in the prior segment of this training. Now in this segment, we're going to cover points three and four. But I'm going to go ahead and read the first two points again, just for review. And then we're going to continue with points three and four. Okay, so let's go over the four points of the philosophy. I'm just going to go through the four points first and then I'm going to go into detail on each of the points. I'm just going to read you the philosophy right off the card. You can download this uh, image that has the philosophy printed on it. The links are in the training guide and on this video. The God Power Philosophy, point number one. The facts and circumstances do not create reality. Meaning is what creates and elicits reality. Meaning creates vibration which resonates with and activates everything that is like it in the universe. You have the power to decide on the meaning to create the reality you want. Point one. Point two. There is no right answer in the universe. It doesn't matter whether you go left or you go right. As long as you decide that the way you are going is the best way, then the way you go becomes the correct best path by decision. Point number three, you are in the perfect place right now. From where you are with what you have, you have the ability to elicit whatever it takes to get wherever you want to go. If you go left and you end up on top of a mountain, you will elicit a helicopter to get you where you want to go. If you go right and end up on the beach, you will elicit a boat that will take you where you want to go. If you need money, you will elicit a way to get it. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are, what you have, or where you are. Point number four. Everything is creation created. Every manifestation, solution, and opportunity is your creation. It does not matter whether or not it already exists. Every manifestation, solution, and opportunity is custom created perfectly from where you are with what you have to get where you want to be. However, if at any point you think that things have gone wrong, then you will not be able to see the solution even though it is lying at your feet. If this happens, go back to number one. Let your quest for knowing continue. Okay, here we are at point number three of the God Power Philosophy. Now, so far, we control meaning. It makes us fearless. Doesn't matter what's going on, it's working out. We control, it doesn't matter which way we go, which decision we make. Because we get to decide whichever way we go is the way. That makes you ultra confident. Now we're at point number three. And I'm going to read it here first. You are in the perfect place right now. 
from where you are with what you have, you have the ability to elicit whatever it takes to get wherever you want to go. If you go left, you end up on top of a mountain. You will elicit a helicopter to get to where you want to go. If you go right and you end up on a beach, you will elicit a boat that will take you where you want to go. If you need money, you will elicit a way to get it. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are, what you have, or where you are. Wow. That's a powerful statement. That's a powerful statement. You're in the perfect place right now. It's like, man, I live under a bridge. That's the perfect place. I don't have any money. That's perfect. It's like, oh, I live in this place, or I live in that place, or I don't have arms, I don't have legs, or I don't have an education, I don't have any money, I, you know, I, this is where I'm at. No problem. Because remember, it doesn't matter where you are. You can get where you're going from there. That's a fundamental understanding of the God power philosophy. <laughs> We are creators. It's like, oh, I'm out in the middle of nowhere on a road in North Dakota. It's four o'clock in the morning, minus 20 degrees, and I'm out of gas. Okay. Okay, it seems like a dire situation. I get it. But if things are working out, it doesn't matter what happens. They work out. A gas station appears. That's how it works. It doesn't matter where you are or what you have. It works out for you from there. Let's see how this works now. Okay, so you are in the perfect place right now. Now let's suppose that you're sitting there and you look at what you got and you say, you know what? I got a Phillips screwdriver, I got a wrench, and I got a hammer. That's what I got. Okay. And let's say that you say I'm... Uh, on a mountaintop. Okay. And uh, and you say, hey, you know, I uh, clearly, I'm not where I want to be and I don't have what I need to get where I want to go. Remember, that's an assessment, right? And it's also an instruction, unfortunately. So you go to the universe search, kind of like a Google search, but it's universe search. Search for opportunities, situations, events, circumstances. And you get to the filter stage, the criteria, and you say, okay, what do you have? Well, I have a screwdriver, I have a wrench, and I have a hammer. Okay. And where are you located? I'm located on the top of this mountain. Say, okay. And then you get to the part where it says working out or not working out. And <laughs> you say, well, let's get real. Let's, uh, let's face the facts. This is not working out. So you check not working out. And they say, what's the best solution from where I'm at? And the solutions come back and they say, man, you know what? If you had a, uh, an in wrench or if you had an um, electric screwdriver, this would work. Yeah, but I don't have one. Oh, okay. And if you had a pile of money, you could buy this, but, but I don't have that. And if you were located down in the valley in the city, you know, you could get to these resources, but, but I don't have that. And if you had these other tools and other special instruments, you know, you could get what you want. But I don't have that. That's a not, those are all not working out solutions because they don't work for me. They can't work for me. And they said, and the, you know, this is one of those verbal interface uh, search engines. And so you, you say, hey, that doesn't work for me. And they say, yeah, but you said it wasn't working out, right? I said, yeah. So that means that all the solutions, everything you think of, everything that happens, everything that occurs, everything that unfolds for you <laughs> is not going to work out from where you are with what you have. Oh. Said if you want to have a working out solution, then you better decide that you're in a working out place. Say, okay, I'm in a working out place. Okay, okay. Now... Now you go back to the search, and this time you say, okay, from where I am, with what I have, 
what are the solutions that work out for me? So, okay, what do you got? I got a wrench, I got a screwdriver, a hammer. Okay, good. So next thing you know, the solutions that show up, the opportunities that unfold, it says, if you have a screwdriver and a hammer and you're on the top of a mountain, you can do this. I said, man, that works for me. <laughs> That's exactly what I was looking for. Because there is a solution. There is an opportunity. There is a situation that you can do from where you are with what you have there always is always is but you know people go to a search engine and they say what's the best way to to get rich well you you invest you know a million dollars in this you say oh i don't have a million dollars see i can't do it well you got to say from where you are and then it's working out oh okay from where i am and then it's working out. And where are you? I got zero dollars in the bank. Oh, okay. Then the best way to get rich is with zero dollars in the bank. And where you live is do this. Oh, okay. I can do that. You realize that when you start with the search criteria of working out. And then from where you are, I'm here. Working out from here. Working out with these items this information this knowledge i have these people i know these tools i have the amount of money i have in the bank you know what i like to do you know where i'm at all that from this circumstance and the universe knows exactly where you are and what you have and what you know and who's around you and they know exactly what to work with give me the solution that works based on this and there's always going to be one but again like point number two, you have to decide <laughs> that you're in the working out place. Because if you're not, it's going to turn out you don't have what you need. You're not in the right place. You don't know what you need to know. You don't have the contacts and resources and people necessary to get what you want because you're not supposed to. You're in the wrong place. But if you decide... I'm always in the perfect place at the perfect time with everything I need to get everything I want. Then you're always eliciting from the universe solutions based on where you are, when you are, <laughs> when you're at that place. It's like, you know, if it's not working out, man, you can have the tools. Man, I got those tools. And you can have uh, the resource. You could be in the right place. I'm in the right place. But this is, uh, you know, this opportunity was last week. I say, oh, it was the wrong time. Darn, it was the wrong time. I say, okay. So this time, you're from a not working out place. You, you go and you do a search and you say, this time you're at the right time. You're in the right place, but you don't have the right tools. Ah, it's a miss again. Of course it's a miss. You're in a not working out place. So something is going to go wrong. You're, it's not going to be the right time. It's not going to be the right place. You're not going to have enough money. You're not going to have enough tools. You know, yeah, you're at the club. And that's the place where you're going to meet the love of your life. But she was there last night, not tonight. It doesn't work out. You said reality's not working out for you. You're not going to be there at the right time. It's not going to happen. It can't happen. It's not meant to be. Working out is not meant to be for you if you say things aren't working out. That means they can't work out. They're not supposed to work out. But when you say, I'm always in the right place at the right time with everything I need to get everything I want, then you're causing the universe to always reveal opportunities, to always have ideas that come to mind, to have circumstances that happen that you say, huh, it's weird that this really great opportunity is available and it just happens <laughs> it's like you say what 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 do you know how to do i know how to shear sheep and i know how to scuba dive oh okay it's like a weird combination but that's where you're at okay great so what's a great opportunity for me and if i'm in a working out place which means you know with what i have is enough to get where i want to be say okay next thing you know there's an opportunity that shows up where somebody needs to scuba dive from a boat to an island and shear sheep. And you say, how weird is it that the exact things that I know how to do in a weird combination 
uh, suddenly there's an opportunity that's exactly, <laughs> it's like it's tailor-made for, for me. It's, it's not weird at all. It's called creation. It's called manifestation. That's called instructing reality to start with where you are and give me the solution from here. Give me the opportunities from here. Make it work out from here. And that's where you are, so that's what you're working with. Have you ever had a situation where some person you knew, some contact or some special skill you had or, you know, some weird thing that you can do suddenly comes into play and it's like, hey, can anybody do this? And say, yeah, I can do that. It's like, how weird is it they ask for that one thing and that happens to be the thing you can do? It's not weird at all. It's called manifestation. It's called being in the right place at the right time with the right skills, the right knowledge. Only get the right opportunities and elicit the right circumstances and the best circumstances based on what you have and where you are. If you expect it. If you know that things work out for you from exactly where you are. Because the minute you say they can't or they don't or they won't, then that means they're not supposed to. And guess what? You're going to be right. It doesn't work out for you. Someone could say, blah, 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 blah. It takes $10,000 to do this great opportunity. You say, man, all I got is eight. Doesn't work. But if you were to work in that place, then the opportunity that showed up to get you the same results would be only five. You say, man, that was working out. <laughs> How is it that this opportunity showed up that was within my means? That I had the right tools or the right knowledge or the right skills or lived in the right town or knew the right people or had the right contacts or drove the right car or the right truck or whatever. It's not weird at all. That's how it's supposed to be. You're a creator being. You get to say that it works out for me. It does, The universe doesn't say, oh, well, it's only going to work out if you have this stuff, if you have a lot of money or, you know, it's like I live under a bridge. No problem. There's opportunity for that. What is it? I don't know. And you're not going to know. Just because you can't think of it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Of course it exists. It always exists. But the only way you're going to find it is if you expect it. Because only then is it meant to unfold for you. Only then is it meant to exist. Only then is it meant to show up. Only then is the idea meant to come to mind for you. I mean... Say, hey, but, you know, I live under a bridge. I don't have any tools. I don't have any money. I don't have. I only have the clothes that I'm wearing. Oh, okay. And where are you at? I'm under the 4th Street Bridge. Works out for you from there. But, but how can it? Just trust me. It works out for you from there. Okay. I'm going to expect it. I'm going to expect that I'm in the right place at the right time with everything I need, which, frankly, is nothing but everything I need to get everything I want. Okay, good. Next thing you know, some guy... Breaks down on the bridge and uh, goes down to get some water for his car or something. And he sees he's under the bridge. You have a little chit-chat. Man, that's a long-lost relative. <laughs> you just moved into a million-dollar mansion. Or you happen to have the skills. Or you happen to be somebody he knows. Or he needs somebody with your skill set or your ability. Next thing you know, you have the greatest job you ever had. Because you were in the right place at the right time. And you had everything you needed, which was nothing. But if you weren't under that bridge, in the right place, at that particular time, when the guy broke down, that wouldn't have happened. But if you thought that nothing works out, I can't, clearly I'm not in the right place, clearly it's not the right time, and clearly I don't have anything I need to make it, to get what I want for it to work out. I can tell you right now that you're going to be right. Self-fulfilling prophecy is what's meant to be. You don't think you got what it takes? You don't. But if you think you got what it takes to make it, you do. I don't care what it is you know. It's going to turn out to come into play somehow. 
that's going to turn out to be a benefit somehow. Maybe you're under the bridge and uh, looking for grub worms to eat, and you're digging stuff up, and there's something there. Wow, that's weird. What is this? And some kind of a chest, and you dig. There's a chest of gold there. Listen, one of the video examples I have, manifesting examples, it's a, it's a type 3, which we're going to get to that, the types of manifestations, which is type 1 through 4. But this couple is just walking through the woods and, uh, and they see this, these rusty cans sticking out of the ground. But they see something shiny. It catches their attention. They go over to it and check it out. Guess what? It's $10 million in gold pieces that have been buried there since 1800 and something. They're brand new coins that were buried right after they were minted. And they've been there for 100 years. More than 100 years. $10 million. And they got to keep it. It's like a walk in the woods can make you $10 million. If... Things are working out for you. Was that the right place? Sure was. Was it the right time? Uh huh. Because you see somebody walk in there the next day and sees that little dug up area there. He went in the right place, but it was the wrong time. That can only happen if you know things are working out for you. And if things are working out for you, you're always in the right place at the right time. And you always have whatever you need. It's like, what do you need? Well, all you need is your hands to dig it up. Just get a stick. Dig up the dirt. <laughs> can you carry the gold back? Yeah, you can carry it, right? Turns out it was a robbery. Back in the 1800s, of somebody that worked at a, a gold mint, where they minted gold into coins or something, and uh, he buried it there <laughs> and uh, was going to go back for it and uh, never did. And there it is, 100 and some years later. There it is. So what if the guy was living in the woods, living in the woods, right? Got no tools, got no money, got nothing, nothing. But guess what? He's a follower of the God power philosophy. He knows that if he says so, if he instructs the universe that things are working out for me, I'm always in the right place at the right time with everything I need to get everything I want. Could be tromping through the woods and come upon that and boom, he's a multi-millionaire. The guy living in the woods. No money in the bank. No house. No things. No tools. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter what you have. It only matters that you expect and instruct the universe. Things work out for me. They're always working out for me. No matter where I am, it works for me. No matter what I have, it works for me. No matter what time it is, it works for me. Wherever I am, with whatever I have, I'm in the right place. There's always a solution for you based on who you are, what you have, what you know, whatever, if you say so. But I'm telling you right now, if you say that you don't have what it takes because you don't have money, you don't have what it takes because you don't have the tools, you don't have what it takes because it's not the right time, you don't have what it takes, which stock market people always say, oh, it's not the right time, you know, if I only invested then. No, it could be the perfect time right now for something, okay? But you don't, you're not in the right place, you're not, it's not the right time, you don't have the tools, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the skills, whatever. I can tell you. You're not going to get what you want. Life is going to be hard because it's supposed to be. Listen, if you want to be able to instruct reality that it works out for you, and if you want that to be something that works out, that where you have the right and the ability to instruct reality to work out for you, and you do, then it must also be equally true that if you instruct the reality that you don't have what it takes, that it's not the right place, that it's not the right time, that you don't know what you're doing, then it must not work out for you. 
by exactly the same principle, by exactly the same point that you get to instruct the universe how reality unfolds for you. So let's reread this again. Point number three. You are in the perfect place right now. Now, do you see what you're saying? It's like you're doing the universe search. And it's like, hey, are you in the right place? Sure am. What do you have? I have this, this, and this, and guess what? That's all I need. Perfect. What time is it? It's this time. It's the right time. You get what you want. There's a solution for you from there. It's like walk over by this tree and there's $10 million in gold there. Or walk over by the brook and uh, wash your face and you get a multi-million dollar idea. It's easy to come up with an idea that's worth a lot of money. So easy. It doesn't take money to come up with an idea. And you think, oh, but you know, you got to have no. Somebody else has the money to invest. There's usually the guy with the money and usually the guy with the idea. Right? Because if you think there's any kind of way that it's not going to work, you're going to be right. So let me read the whole thing. You are in the perfect place right now. From where you are, with what you have, you have the ability to elicit, let's call forth, let's attract, let's create, whatever it takes to get to wherever you want to go. An example, if you go left and you end up on top of a mountain, you're going to elicit a helicopter, right? Because that's, <laughs> that's how you get off the mountain to where you want to go. To get to where you want to go, you're not going to elicit a boat because that's not the right solution for where you are. But if you go right and you end up on the beach, you're going to elicit a boat. Of course, the helicopter will work there too, but it's wherever you are, you elicit the solution from there. If you're on the beach, you're going to elicit a boat. If you're on the mountain, you're going to elicit an airplane or, or a helicopter or something, right? If you need money, you're going to get a way to get it. It's like, yeah, but I don't have any skills. Well, can you scratch off a lottery ticket? Can you walk through the woods? You see? Can you have a multi-million dollar idea and somebody else has the money? Of course you can. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are. What you now have are where you are. Or what time it is. There's solutions for you from there if you expect them to be. If you instruct reality, it works out for me from wherever I am with whatever I have. Okay. So point number three makes you unstoppable. Doesn't it? Think about it. It's like you're under a bridge. Yeah, but it works out for you. Can't be stopped there. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm on top of a mountain. Doesn't matter. Can you walk in the woods? Can you dig up a rusty can full of gold? Yep, sure can. You're unstoppable. It's like, yeah, but I'm in the city and I don't have any money and, you know, I don't have any tools. Works out from there. Can't be stopped. Doesn't matter where you are. You can't be stopped. It doesn't matter what time it is. Can't be stopped. It doesn't matter what you have or what you don't have. Can't be stopped. Doesn't matter what you know or what you don't know. You can't be stopped. Because if you know you're always in the right place at the right time, then you're always going to have a solution from where you are that makes you unstoppable. So let's review where we are. Point number one, you're in charge of the meaning. You're in charge of what's meant to be. You're in charge of your fate. That makes you fearless. Because you always get to decide how it unfolds. How reality, what reality becomes from here. We don't care about the facts. We only care what becomes of them. Makes you fearless. Number two, it doesn't matter what decision you make. You get to decide which way you want to go and decide that's the way. That makes you ultra confident. It's like, how did you decide so fast? Because I just decided what I wanted. I just, this is the way I wanted to go. Well, how do you know that's the right way? Because <laughs> I get to say it's the right way. That's how. I'm a follower of the God Power philosophy. I'm empowered. I'm a creator being. I don't go by random ridiculousness that everybody else does. I'm elite. I'm empowered. I can go whichever way I want to go and it works out for me. 
Because I say so. I get to say so. That's why. So you're fearless and ultra competent and unstoppable. Number three, it's like, hold it. Yeah, but you don't have what it takes. You don't have the tool. Doesn't matter what I have. It works out. Doesn't matter where I am. It works out. Doesn't matter what time it is. It works out. Doesn't matter what skills I have or who I know. It works out. It's like, dude, you live in the woods. So what? You live under a bridge. So what? You don't have any tools. So what? You don't have any money. So what? I could live under a bridge with no money and I can come up with a billion dollar idea. And if things are working out, because I say they are, the right people and the right things and the right opportunities line up. And next thing you know, I'm an overnight billionaire and I was living under a bridge. And I can tell you, by the way, personally, that I was living on the street for a while. There was a bush at <laughs> uh, the back of a Winn-Dixie down in South Florida. And it was kind of hollow on the inside. And that's where that's where I was sleeping. I had a, my little piece of cardboard there. And I can tell you, one night I came, quote unquote, home to my uh, to Bush to the Bush, uh, and uh, there was somebody else sleeping on my cardboard. And you know, I didn't want to mess with them, so I got myself another piece of cardboard. And for the night, I found another place. And luckily, the guy was gone the next day. But but uh, I was living on the street. So what? Man, <laughs> look where I am now. Look where I'm going now. It didn't matter where I was. I didn't have any money. I got really good at going up to restaurants after they closed to see if they had any food that they were going to throw away. I got really good at that. But look where I am now. I'm unstoppable. Fearless. Ultra confident. Look at the philosophy I put together. Look at the change I'm going to be making to this world. And by the way, it's not my right particularly to make the world change that's not my right not my intention it is my right and my intention to make a philosophy available to the elites to the people who find it so that they can have everything they want because that's who's meant to have this information the people who find it are the ones that are meant to have it somebody could be living under a bridge but they got a <laughs> they got a cell phone and they're looking at this video right now and they're thinking that, hey, things can work out for me. Next thing you know, they're living in a mansion. Works just like that. So with just the first three points so far, we're fearless, ultra confident, and unstoppable. Man, can you imagine going through life fearless, ultra confident, and unstoppable? It's like, dude, you're over here. No problem. It's like, oh, but you're over there. No problem. It's this time or that time, this skill or that skill, or you have no money. So what? You don't have to have any money to have an idea. You don't have to have any money to be in the right place at the right time. doesn't matter what you got. As long as you're a follower of the God power philosophy and you understand that you are a creator being and you have the right to decide that your reality works out for you. Once you know that, once you know you have that right, and once you know it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing, doesn't matter what anybody else is thinking, you have the right to decide it's working out for you. But they, in the same way as they have a right to decide that it doesn't work out for them. And you know what? That's the right. And you know what? It's not my business to change that. It's only my business to make available this powerful philosophy for the elite. I'm telling you, the elite are going to be the ones that are going to be, I don't know if I want to say running the world, but they're going to be the greatest athletes. They're going to be the greatest uh, actors and actresses and politicians and business people and inventors and scientists and whatever, whatever you want to, uh, whatever your thing is, they're going to be the greatest because they're going to be fearless. They're going to be ultra confident and they're going to be unstoppable. And it doesn't take anything more than that. But I tell you, this training is just beginning. <laughs> the philosophy is just the beginning of the training. There's a whole lot more. Remember that it doesn't matter if we go left or if we go right. Right? We already know that. We never change what we do. Because sometimes life is going to, 
you know, you're going to end up going into foreclosure. You're going to end up losing the job. You're going to end up in some sort of a situation that you didn't necessarily choose, but that's okay. You're going to end up living in the woods or living on the street like I did. No problem. No biggie. There's a tree right over there with $10 million under it. There's great ideas floating in the ether, ready for you to pick them up if you know it's working out for you no matter what. So we never change the facts. It's like we don't have uh, you know, the actual medical you know, inf injection for this guy. No problem. We got water, right? It doesn't matter what you have. It's only the meaning, right? So this is the interesting thing about the God Power philosophy as well, is we're not limited by time frame. Since in the present, we never change the facts. We never say, get your job back. That would be changing the facts. That would be saying, try to fix the facts. We don't worry about fixing the facts. We don't care that you're in the woods. We don't care that you lost your job. We don't care that you're in foreclosure. We don't care that you don't have any money. We don't care about that. What we care about is what becomes of this situation where does it go from here that's all we care about and that's the only thing we have power over frankly you don't have power to get the job back don't worry about that decide that it's working out for you and you get a better job that's all we care about is changing the meaning of the situation we don't care about changing the situation now something that's happened say 30 years ago back then and all this time you could have said, ooh, that wasn't working out. I made the move or I didn't make the move or I got the job, I didn't got married, got divorced, blah, blah, blah. Whatever the situation is, whatever it was, whichever way you went, you went left or you went right, whatever choice it was, it's already over. That's Man, that's 30 years ago. And you think that's out of reach, but it's not. Because those situations, whatever way you decided to take the job or not, or make the move or not, or get married or not, or divorced or whatever, if they were in the present and you made a choice on which way you went, which is, of course, what you did in the past, or you had to, you know, get foreclosed on or, you know, you lost a job, whatever, whichever way you ended up going, if it was in the present, we would just simply change the meaning and say, okay, so I got fired, so... This is working out. This, this works out for me. And you end up getting a better job or better situation or coming up with a million dollar idea or winning the lottery or walking through the woods and becoming a multimillionaire. I mean, that's how it works. Okay. But it only works if you decide it's working out for you. You have to instruct the universe on how what's meant to happen here, what's meant to be. You have to create your fate by controlling your meanings. When you control your meanings, you become master of your fate. So since if it was in the present, we wouldn't care which way it went. We'd only care that we said this works out going this way. Then in the past, notice that things that have happened in the past, you made the move, you changed jobs, whatever. Notice that you can't change those facts. It's like you left one job and you went to another. You can't go back there and, and, and change that now. That was 30 years ago. You made a move. You can't go back 30 years ago and undo that move. You can't do it. You can't change the facts. Reality has occurred. It's done. But you know what? Even if it was in the present, we wouldn't change it, would we? Not at all. The only thing we would change if it was in the present was the meaning. We would say that it works out going this way. That's what we would do if it was in the present. But guess what? The meaning is the one thing we can change even for things that are 30 years ago. doesn't matter. It's like, oh, you know, I made that move back then and I thought it was a bad move and it was the wrong thing to do. But here 30 years later with the God Power philosophy and the power that it has, I can say, you know what? It turns out that that was the thing I should have done. You can literally change reality retroactively. You can literally go back in your past and everything you said wasn't working out. You can now say from the present that that choice you made back then 
was the right choice. It was the working out choice. It was the way to go. It was the thing you should have done. You say, hey, I was working out. And you know what? The minute you say that, the minute you say that that was the right move, then you realize that you wouldn't be here listening to this philosophy had those circumstances not occurred. You realize all the good things that have happened since that point, the minute it turns out it was the right thing to do, it all of a sudden turns out there was a lot of right things that came from it. And it's like, you say, well, you know, making that move was the right thing to do. And you think that it doesn't affect the present. But, you know, when you made that move, you met this person, which was your neighbor. And you haven't heard from that neighbor in 30 years, right? But all this time you thought, this was the wrong thing. You shouldn't have made this move. But today, after uh, learning this part of the philosophy, and we're only at the beginning of the training, there's a lot more training, really cool stuff coming, especially the checking system. But right now, at this point, you realize, hey, I can go back and change that. I can decide that that was the working out move for me. Because once you decide everything you've ever done was working out, <laughs> You literally rewrite your past. And next thing you know, that neighbor from 30 years ago calls you up and it's got a great opportunity or a great job or got a million dollar idea and wants to get you in on or something happens now. That's because that back then was working out. But, you know, it happens the other way, too. It's like, you know, 20 years ago, something I said was not working out. And unbeknownst to you, you have some kind of disease right now because of it that you don't even know about. But here you are studying this philosophy and you now say, hey, you know that thing 20 years ago? Um, it turns out that was working out. It was working out for me because everything I've ever done was working out for me. And you get to say that and you should say that. This is an important thing for you to do. Everything I ever did was working out for me in some kind of way or another. When I was living on the street, it was working out for me. Some kind of way. Man, I learned a lot of stuff. I had a lot of great ideas. A lot of the material and information that came to me from those times are now part of this philosophy. If I hadn't have been living on the street, I wouldn't have this information. It's always working out. But you say 20 years ago, that thing, whatever it was, was the right thing. It was, uh, you know, it was, it was the right choice I could make at the time. It was based on what I knew at the time. And of course, since everything's working out for me, and since I get to say even the past things were, I now say that was all working out for me in some kind of way. And guess what? You don't even have to know how. You don't have to know how. You just have to give the instructions. It's like you're in foreclosure, or you just got your job fired, or something else happened, and you say it's working out. You know how? Not really, not yet. I will later on down the road, you know, a year from now or 10 years from now or somewhere, I'll say, oh, look, look what happened because of that. But you don't have to know then what's going to happen. You don't have to know. You just have to give the instruction. This is working out. That's all you got to do. That's all you have to do. That's all you're responsible for is to give the instruction that this is working out. That's all you got to do. You don't have to know how. You don't have to know how. So you say, you know what? That was working out back then. And you might wonder, you know, I wonder how it's working out. I don't know, but it's okay. I instructed that that was working out. And you don't even know that this disease that was now creeping up in you because of something that happened back then that before wasn't working out. But now since it's working out, you don't have that disease inside you that you didn't even know about. It's gone. Why? Because the situation that was going to cause it from the past is now changed to a working out situation, which means that good things came from it, not bad things, which means the bad things that had started coming from it have now changed in the present because of your change in the past. That's how it works. Somebody you met back then suddenly is in, the, in your picture again or... An idea comes to mind. It's like, you know, now that that was working out, I, I remember meeting this person and they, and they had this idea for this thing or they told me about something or they made a suggestion and it just now, I just now remember that suggestion and you know what? That's a good thing and you end up doing that and becoming ultra successful. But you didn't remember that idea when you thought that that was not working out back then. 
But as soon as you said it was working out back then, 30 years ago, then suddenly the benefits it would have had and still has from now being that it's working out. Now ideas come to mind, now retroactively cascading through time to the now, things have changed because it's a simulation. It can be changed. And we're going to get to that. Reconfiguring, we're going to get to that. There's a story of a guy. It's called The Accident That Never Happened. And what happened was is he's driving along and one night and uh, he goes to go around this truck and he goes around the left side of the truck and he ends up going off the road and tumbling and flipping and boom next thing you know he sees the white light clearly he's dead and he knows he's dead but then suddenly he's back on the road again and this is in the video examples the manifesting video examples when you get to that part of the training and he's back on the road again and uh and that act, and it, before the time that the accident happened. So instead of going left, this time he goes right. That's a change in reality. Because it's a simulation, it can be changed that way. When you change the meanings of past events, the present is going to change. It's going to improve or not improve. <laughs> People do go back uh, to past events and say, you know, that was the worst thing I could have ever done. Man, I hear people say that and I cringe because I know that's an instruction. They say, oh, that's the worst thing could have ever happened or that's the worst thing I ever did. Blah, 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 blah. Dude, you don't know what you're doing to your reality. It's like you're instructing it to create bad things for you. Decide it was the best choice you could make at the time. Decide it was working out for you in some kind of way, even if now you still don't know how. It doesn't matter because there's invisible creations going on that involve your reality. People you're going to meet, ideas that are going to come to mind, circumstances are going to unfold, things going on in your body. There's a lot of things going on that you can't see that are all going on based on the polarity if things are working out for you or not. And there's things going on based on everything that's happened in your past. That's why you remember them. Your memory serves the present. Your memory is the context of the present. So anything that you're remembering, you're remembering because it's still connected to the now. You might not remember when you got your tricycle. And if you don't, it's because it's not part of the now anymore. Memories that are no longer foundations, no longer sources of your now configuration, uh, you forget because it's not relevant and you should forget them. No problem. No biggie. But if there's things you remember, especially things that bother you, if you remember things that bother you, they are still affecting your now reality. They're still a part of your reality because I can tell you, there are going to be things you're going to change in the past. You can say, hey, you know what? That was working out. And next thing you know, you forgot that it ever happened because as soon as you change it to working out, the things it was doing in the present that were harming you have now ceased and now it's no longer a relevant part of your now. That memory is no longer uh, supporting some thing that's going on in your now. So you need to go back in your past and you can with the God Power philosophy, you can go back to everything that you ever said was going wrong and decide it was going right in some kind of way, even if you don't know how right now. And then maybe tomorrow or a week from now or a month from now or a year from now or 10 years from now, you think, hey, you know what? Now you think about it. If that hadn't happened, blah, 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 I wouldn't have had this great opportunity I have right now. Because then later <laughs> you can see the fruits of the changes you made in the past. Later you can see the connection, say, hey, this happened because that was working out. I made that move and now 10 years later, this great thing is happening that wouldn't have happened had I not made that move. But I can tell you, you got to decide that move worked out. You got to decide that was working out because otherwise 10 years now you're going to say this terrible thing is happening to me now 
is happening because that move was the worst thing I could have ever done. You see how that works? Because it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Go back in your past. Decide, first of all, just create a meaning that everything you have ever done, everything that has ever happened in your past was working out for you in some kind of way, even if you don't know how. Say that right, say that right now. We're in training. This is not just information. This is training. Right now, I want you to instruct the universe, instruct reality, instruct the COC, which is the consciousness of creation, which is handled by facilitation, but we're going to talk about that when we get to the structure of the universe. Instruct it that everything that has ever happened in your experience leading up to the now was working out in some kind of way, even if you didn't know how then, even if you didn't see it then, even if you don't see it now, it was working out in some kind of way. So be it, and so it already is. Do that now. Put this on pause. Give that instruction to the universe. Woo! Man, that feels good. You're going to feel that. When you release that stuff, you're going to literally feel good right now when you do that. Go ahead and put this on pause. Instruct the universe. I'll give it to you one more time. Everything that has ever happened, any decisions you ever made, any reality that ever occurred in the past, leading up to the now, was working out in some kind of way, even if you didn't know how then, even if you didn't see it then, and even if you don't know how now, it's working out in some kind of way. So be it, and so it already is. Okay. Okay, here we are at point number four of the God Power Philosophy. That's the final point. There's four points. This is number four. I'm going to read it. Everything is creation created. Every manifestation, solution, and opportunity is your creation. It does not matter whether or not it already exists. Every manifestation, solution, and opportunity is custom created perfectly from where you are with what you have to get where you want to be. Okay. What this is about is, is that you're not having to go through reality hoping <laughs> that A, the thing you want exists, be it the person or the whatever, and B, that you can find it. Everything you are doing in reality is a creation. Even if it's something that already exists, the fact that it comes into your space, the fact that it's now yours or you're now there or they're with you now or whatever, is still a creation. Everything is created. Now think about that. The story I was telling you earlier of uh, Jimmy Walker and the gas station showing up, Listen, that gas station wasn't there. If he had to depend on uh, his reality experience unfolding, uh, if he had to depend on what was there, he'd be dead because there was no gas station there. Point number four says that you are a creator. You have creator status, which we will get to when we get to the structure of the universe. You have creator status. People call it free will. They call it made in God's image. I call it God power. With creator status, you create from where you are, what you need. And in his case, he needed a gas station. There was one there. It was his creation. It didn't exist before, and it didn't exist after. There's another story, which is also in the video example, the manifesting uh, video examples, which is later on in the training, of uh, Daryl Hannah. Now, she's the blonde you know from uh, the movie Splash with Tom Hanks, where she was a mermaid. She tells a story of when she was a kid that she uh, was shy. She was really, really shy uh, kid, and she just didn't talk to people. He was very shy. In fact, so much so that 
they wanted to institutionalize her. They wanted to put her in some kind of a, a place that, you know, could cater to her because she just was so doggone shy. She, uh, she just really couldn't communicate with people. She was kind of a loner. And so her mom was super cool. And her mom took her out of school and instead decided to go to Jamaica for, uh, for a while just to kind of get away from everything. And they were living out in this part of Jamaica out by the beach. And so all she had when she was a kid was these uh, teddy bears and stuff that she would talk to. And one day, Daryl Hannah, when she was a kid, I don't know, she, 10 or 12 or something like that probably. It'll say in the video example. She was walking along this trail and there was a house there. And there was this Jamaican woman out in the garden and she, you know being really really shy she kind of stayed away but the Jamaican she was waving her over come over come over come and see what I'm doing so she went over there and and she was showing her the flowers and the things she was growing in her garden and every day she would go out and she was uh, you know communicating with somebody this was kind of new for her because she was so shy but this woman was just so nice and so inviting and it was so interesting to see what she was making in her garden and she had a little house there and a garden and stuff and every day she went and she met up with this woman and she was teaching her things about mints and said taste this smell this flower look at this and stuff and um it was she was really enjoying it it was really a nice thing so one day she told her mother about it now you're going to see this video example it's in the video example section of the training. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it now. So she told her mother about this uh, this woman, and, and her mother freaked out. It's like, oh, you know, stranger danger. You're talking to strangers. It's like, I have to meet this woman. So she said, oh, okay. So she took her down the trail to where the house was. It was a vacant lot. There was nobody there. There was no garden. There was no house, and there was no Jamaican woman. There was nobody there. And <laughs> Daryl Hannah was completely perplexed. She was a kid. She's like, she can't figure out what's going on. Her mom thinks she's loony, of course. And so her mom grounded her for, I don't know, a week or something like that. She wasn't allowed to go out because this was just too weird. But finally, one day, she was allowed to go out again, and Daryl Hannah you know, wanted to figure this out. So she went back down the trail and guess what? The house was there again and the woman was there. And you know what? She was too, uh, she was too shy to ask, how come your house wasn't here? You know, what happened? How come you weren't here when we came by before? You know, she didn't ask her that. But of course she wasn't meant to. So anyway, to make a long story short, the whole time she was there, she went ahead and went back and visited this woman every day again, but she didn't tell her mom, naturally. And um, they ended up going back to the States, and she was better. She could communicate with people now. She, and she was telling her mother about these things that she had learned when she was in Jamaica. And she said, well, how did you know about this mint? How did you know about this plant? How did you know about that flower? How did you know about these vegetables? She said, well, that's what that woman was teaching me. So her mom ended up believing her that that existed. But this is the thing. It was a creation. Point number four. Everything is creation and created. She needed somebody that she could feel comfortable with talking to. She was expecting things to work out. She needed to get over her shyness. And so the perfect scenario unfolded she's in Jamaica she's on the beach there's a harmless woman who's so friendly and so nice that's out in her garden uh, teaching her things she she developed her communication skills and uh, got over her shyness because of that and of course as we know when she came back she ended up being an actress and being famous and being in all these movies but the point for our uh, for the philosophy for point number four the point we need to get at is that the house was created that person was created the scenario the situation was created in the same way as the gas station was created 
You have to understand you're a creator. It doesn't have to already exist. You create what you need when you need it where you are. And this is the thing. Had she not brought her mother down there, she would have never known that that woman didn't really exist. Had those people, Jimmy Walker and his friend, had they not talked about this gas station to the other gas station, had they not talked about it, if they'd just gone down there and got gas and went on their trip, they would have never known that that gas station didn't exist. And Daryl Hannah, if she hadn't brought her mother down there, she would have never known that there was something about that, that that wasn't real. And this is the thing. There were things probably in your experience that are very similar to this. The thing is, is you didn't know that person that stopped and helped you on the street or that circumstance or that place you pulled in to get directions or some kind of a thing that happened. You don't know that it wasn't really there. You don't know that that happened. And that's happening all the time. This is a simulation. We're in the simulation and we want it to be because we're in charge of the simulation. We're, we are both the simulator and the simulated in this experience. If you need a gas station, you got one. Well, if things are working out. If you need a friend, you got one. If things are working out. <laughs> If you need to go back in time and have a redo, because when you passed the truck, you crashed and died, you say, hey, let me do that again. No problem. You got the redo. It's a creation. So you have to, you have to realize that it doesn't matter where you are or what you have. You have the ability to create whatever is needed to get from where you are to where you want to be. Now, the thing about it is, is we're always talking about, with the God Power Philosophy, we're always talking about working out. We're always talking about having, you know, a friend show up, have a gas station show up, you know, uh, back up in time and get a redo so you can be alive again and, and, uh, and, and have the right ideas come to mind and find buried gold and all these other things that are all working out uh, examples, working out reality examples. For people who think the reality is not working out, they, uh, they're they creators as well. They're creators as well, but they're creating and not working out. So by comparison and contrast, uh, they could uh, create somebody who robs them or hurts them. And that person never existed. They just showed up to do that. Or, or they could uh, create a roadblock and they say, oh, we can't go this way. And so they go a different way. And then later... Somebody else comes by that road and there's no roadblock there because it was created as a not working out creation for the people who were expecting their reality to not be working out. So you can create both ways, but the followers of the God Power Philosophy start out with everything's working out. It's already working out. We start out there and then everything we create from there is working out. We're always in the right place at the right time with everything you need. It doesn't matter which way you go, it works out for you. It doesn't matter what the circumstances, you create the meaning. And if something, if you need something, you create it. It doesn't have to exist already. In fact, a lot of times you'll create something for the moment, like the gas station, like, can you imagine how many things are going on that we don't know about? Because people didn't check it out. They didn't go back to see if the gas station was there. They didn't go back to see if the person was there. I mean, you hear a story all the time of somebody broken down on the side of the road and somebody shows up, walks up, helps them out, and they turn around to say thank you and the person's nowhere around. They, where do they go? And you can look 10 miles in either direction. You don't see them walking down the road. There's been no other cars. Say, so, well, that's weird. Because the person showed up to help them. That's the deal. They, they manifested that. So we don't know how many times, even in your experience, you've probably had times where something that occurred was a creation. And if you were to go back there now, it wouldn't even exist. And it never existed. Except for when you need it. 
So we're really thankful and really appreciate these examples of this ability and this thing that we can do by people who experienced it, but they had a high enough awareness that they were able to find out that it was a creation. Because you see, people that are highly immersed in the illusion, the highly immersed people, the people that are really, really into the less face facts type of immersion, um, they would never find out that, it may still be working out for them, but they would never find out that the gas station wasn't there. They would just drive on. They would never find out that the Jamaican woman was really never there. It was just temporary existence. They would never go back and find that out. They, they would just go through life thinking that life is so realistic. It's so, so normal. <laughs> when really, it's magical around every turn. Around every turn, it's magical. You're creating everything that shows up for you. Some things were already there. Some things just appeared there for you for now. And they're all working out, if you say so. And the followers of the God Power philosophy always say so. They always say so. Because it's not an assessment. It's like, here's an envelope. There's a description of a situation. I want you to tell me if it's working out. And the person, God, the follower of God Power philosophy says, yeah, it's working out. They say, hey, but you hadn't even looked at it. You don't have to. Because the question of working out or not is an instruction. It's not an assessment. We don't need to find out if there's water in the syringe, or we don't need to find out that you're on the middle, on the side of the road in the middle of the night at twenty minus twenty degrees, you know, in North Dakota. We don't. That's not the question. The question is, is it going to work out from here? That's an instruction. It's not an assessment because if you went by assessment, if you judge your situation based on the fact that you're out there. In the middle of the night at minus 20 degrees on the side road with no gas, you'd be dead. You'd say, hey, look at this. It's not going to work out for us. The next thing you know, they'd find them frozen at the steering wheel. So without the engine running, there's no heat. And you can't get warm enough for minus 20 degrees. You can't. But they never said, oh no, we're not going to make it. They had the expectation of working out clearly. And we know that because it worked out. The only way it could have worked out is if it was meant to. And the only way it was meant to is if they were expecting it to. You can back it up. You can, you can work it out. You can digest the situation. You can dissect it. So I'm going to reread the, the fourth point. Everything is creation created. Every manifestation, solution, and opportunity is your creation does not matter whether or not it already exists. doesn't have to be a gas station there already. doesn't have to be. doesn't have to be a, a Jamaican woman uh, who's really, really friendly and has a cool garden. doesn't have to be. doesn't have to be there. You don't have to have the, the real medicine. You don't have to have the real operation. That's okay. Every manifestation, solution, and opportunity is custom created perfectly from where you are with what you have to get where you want to be. It's like, where did the gas station show up? Right where they were at. Where did the Jamaican woman show up? Right where, right where she was at. Of course. That's how it works. Where's the love of your life going to show up? Right where you are. Of course. Where's that great opportunity going to happen? Right where you are. Where are you going to find the buried gold? Right down the path you're already going, of course. If it's working out. And for us, it's always working out. Always. Because it's an instruction. When are you ever going to instruct your reality is not working out? When are you ever going to say, Oh, this is not working out? Man. <laughs> I don't use the word stupid. Really. But. To know this philosophy, to understand that that's an instruction to the universe as to how your reality is to unfold and to say, this is not working out. This is the worst thing that ever happened. To say that, to say, this job is killing me, that would be stupid. Now, if somebody else does it, 
that's not a follower of the God Power philosophy? I'd say it's ignorant. They don't know. People die every day. Things that happen that they created, of course. But they don't know. But that's okay. That's the experience. Maybe they'll get it the next time around. Listen, not everybody's going to get this enlightenment this time around. They're not. This There's going to be a certain number of people who find this philosophy and who skyrocket <laughs> seemingly overnight to everything they ever wanted. Suddenly everything is working out. Their health, their love life, their financial situation, everything is working out. There's going to be a certain number of people. They're the elite. In the new reality, by the way, we're in reality seven, which we'll talk about in the structure of the universe. This is a, a brand new reality. It's the greatest reality that has ever existed in all of creation. We'll, we'll get into that when we get there. But in this reality, there's going to be the first ones to come to this philosophy are going to be the elite. And then over time, more and more people are going to find it. And when they do, you know, then they will rise up in everything they want. And that's just how it's going to be. That's no problem with that. But it's not our work to go out and change anybody. Mm -mm. No, this philosophy is for the people who find it. And if there's somebody that you think might be interested in it, then maybe you should mention it. But if they don't sound like they're interested, do not convince them. Do not change them. That's not our business. That's not our right. They can live the rest of their life and the path they're on. No problem. You can get everything you want and live the life of your dreams. No problem. And maybe the next time around in their next lifetime, they will come to this. But it's not our work to change anybody. It's not our work to change anybody. Okay. So, in this last point, everything's created, makes you a creator. Of course you're a creator. You have creator status. So, with this philosophy, you're fearless because you get to decide your fate by meaning. You're ultra confident because you get to decide which way is the right way to go. And the way you went was always the right way to go. You're unstoppable because you're always in the right place at the right time with everything you need to get everything you want. And you're a creator. Whatever you need, you create. It's like, it's funny. I don't remember having that tool, but there it is. And you do the job and you go to look for it later and it's not there. And you say, how'd that, that tool just showed up right when I needed it. And then now it's gone. It's, but you see what happens is, is people don't, they don't know that they didn't have it or they don't know that it's now gone or they don't notice that change or or somebody comes over to the house right when you're doing something and they say, man, if I only had a left-handed widget. And the guy says, man, I got a left-handed widget in my truck. Well, can I borrow? Yeah, isn't it a coincidence <laughs> that you just happened to be here with a left-handed widget right when I needed one? No, that's called creation. Everything is creation. There's no accidents. There's no coincidences. There's only creation. A tree doesn't grow where it grows by accident. There's a seed. The seed got there in some kind of way. It's not an accident. It can't be. Everything is a creation. Everything has a source vibration, which is a meaning. Everything is meant to be. How can an accident happen if everything is meant to be? It can't. Whatever happened was meant to happen. It's like, Hmm, what a coincidence that there's a gas station here. No. You had a meaning that said things are working out. That means that there's going to be a solution. And the solution was this gas station. That was meant to be. Because there was meant to be a solution. That was meant to be working out. It's not an accident. It's not a coincidence. It's not an accident those people walked, came across that gold. They were eliciting that. And maybe the gold didn't even exist there. Maybe suddenly a history showed up where the gold was there and it wasn't there before. Man, you, you don't know what powerful creators you are. You don't even know yet, but you will. You will. By the time you get through this training, man, you are going to be beaming. 
Man, are you going to be confident. Man, are you going to be powerful. Man, are you going to love getting everything you want. It's just going to be the greatest joy. And you know what? The universe couldn't be happier than for you to get everything you want. Okay. So let's go to the final paragraph of the philosophy, which is, it says, however, if at any point you think that things have gone wrong, then you will not be able to see the solution, even though it's lying at your feet. If this happens, go back to number one. Which, of course, number one is you create the meaning. <laughs> You're the one that gets to say it's working out. I forgot to tell you another story, which is interesting. A friend of mine who's uh, in advanced, he's been taking my advanced training. He's very capable. He uh, told me this story where he was at this dealer, working at this dealership. And, uh, this car needed to be moved. Because this big shipment of cars was coming in, and this car had to be moved. And they were looking for the key. And he got in the car, and someone threw him a set of keys. And they said, here you go. He put the key in. He started the car, and he moved it. And then he took the key out. And it turned out they were the wrong keys. Now, the interesting part is, is that when he sucked the key back in to try to do it again, he could not get it to turn ever again it that key only worked in that ignition when he thought it was the right key it's like that injection only cured that guy when he thought it was the miracle cure if somebody had said later hold it that wasn't huh, that wasn't the miracle cure that was water he'd be dead so later it was right afterwards they said hold it those are the wrong keys and as soon as they said that it couldn't work again. He stuck the key back in. He could not make it work again. It could only work when he thought it was the right key. So that's creation for you. It's like you always have the right things at the right time. It's like you need a key to move this car and whatever key they throw you will work. But then, do you see that? It will work. Suddenly, the ignition and the key are a match in that moment. Suddenly, there's a gas station on the side of the road. Suddenly, there's a friendly Jamaican woman there tending a garden to have somebody to talk to. That's how reality works. You're a creator. But if you think it's not working out, that key is not going to work. And you could even have the real key. And if you're thinking, this might not be the right key, you will not get that thing to work, even though it is the right key. If they had a miracle cure that was the real medicine and the guy didn't think it was going to work, it wouldn't work. The guy had the operation for the cancer. It was the real operation. It was the right thing. It got rid of the cancer. But he died anyway because he didn't think he was going to live, and so he didn't. So if you think that things have gone wrong, you could have the solution laying at your feet. It's like, oh my God, I'm on an island. The volcano on this island is erupting and here's a boat to get off the island, but the key is not in the ignition. I don't know what to do. Things are going wrong. And the key is laying at his feet, sitting on a rock right in front of him, but he can't see it. Because if things are going wrong, you're not permitted to see it. You're not supposed to see it. You're not meant to see it. You're not meant to get off the island. But if things are working out, you say, hey, they're working out and there's no key in the boat. And you go to sit down and as your feet shoves the sand, all of a sudden you see something shiny and there's the key. It was buried in the sand and your foot happened to be exactly in the place where the key was and happened to uncover it? Yeah, that's how things happen when they're working out. But they can only happen like that. They can only work out when you're expecting them to. And the followers of the God Power philosophy always know, always say, always instruct that everything's working out. It's already working out. And they always say, I don't care what I did in the past. I don't care what broke, 
You don't care what job I had and didn't have, got married, got divorced, blah, 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 moved or didn't move or somebody said something terrible or whatever, did something terrible, whatever happened in the past, you say now, retroactively, because you can, with the God Power Philosophy, you can, you say, hey, you know what? Even if I didn't know it then, I know it now. It was working out in some kind of way. I don't know how. I don't even know now how, but I don't have to know how. I just have to instruct that it was working out. And then the universe is in charge of it after that, after you give the instructions. You know, after you say that this injection is going to work, then it's up to the universe to make it work. It's up to the universe for the cancer to go away. When you say I've had the operation and my arthritis is gone, it's up to the universe to remove the arthritis. That's how it works. When you're stuck on the side of the road with no gas and minus 20 degree weather, and you're expecting it to work out, it's up to the universe to create a gas station for you. When you're painfully shy and you're trying to get over it, it's and you, but you think things are going to work out in some kind of way, it's up to the universe to figure out a way. The next thing you know, you got a friendly person there to practice your interaction with, to get over your shyness. That's how it works. But that can, the universe can't create those wonderful solutions from where you are with what you have until you've instructed the universe as a creator being, as the one who's responsible for instructing the reality for your life. It's up to you to say that my life works out. I get everything I want. It's always working out for me. I always make the right decisions, and whichever way I go is the right way to go. I'm always in the right place at the right time with everything I need. And no matter what it looks like, it's like, ooh, we don't have the medicine, no problem, it still works out. It's like, oh, we're out of gas, no problem, it still works out. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter what's going on. What does matter, in every case, in point one, it matters the meaning you give it. Absolutely. Point two, the decisions, you know, go left or right. The thing that matters is the meaning you give the way you go. Point three, you know, the whether you have what it takes to get what you want. The only thing that matters is the meaning. You have to say, I have everything it takes. But you don't have anything. Yeah, well, guess what? Then the solution I'm going to get is one based on me not having a thing. It's like, but you live in the woods. No problem. It's like you don't have any tools. You don't have any money. How do you? How, how are you going to become a multimillionaire living in the woods with no tools and no skills and and uh, no money? I just walk around the woods till I come across ten million dollars buried in the ground. That's how it works. That's how it always works. That's how it's meant to work. You're creators. This is an illusion. Man, you're simulating your reality. It's your right to decide how it goes. So that, my friends, is the God Power Philosophy. Four points. The facts and circumstances don't create reality. Meaning does. And you're in charge of meaning. Fearless. Because you always get to say it works out, no matter what. Number two, there's no right answer. doesn't matter which way you go. You get to say the way I went and the way I'm going are the right ways. That makes you ultra confident. Number three, doesn't matter what you have. doesn't matter where you are. doesn't matter what time it is. You always got everything you need right where you're at to get where you're going. The only thing that matters is that you say so. Because if you say so, then the universe will tailor a solution, an opportunity for you that fits where you are perfectly. It's like, wow, all I had was this left-handed widget uh, wrench. That's the only thing I have. It's the only tool I have. And the solution that came, the only tool that this solution required was a left-handed widget wrench. And I just happened to have one. How weird. What a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, as if. And number four, you're a creator. It doesn't even have to exist. The solution doesn't even have to already exist. 
it will be created according to need, according to the situation. You need a gas station, you got one. You need a friend, you got one. You need a cure, you got one. You need the operation, you need the arthritis gone, it's gone. You're a creator. Recognize it, embrace it, be empowered by it. That's what this is all about. Man, we're just getting started too. <laughs> we are just getting started. Wait till we get to the next part of the training, which is the checking system. This is something that is brand new to reality. It's the most powerful tool you will ever have in your life most powerful tool you will ever have is the checking system the god power reality checking system which is coming up next but let me just cover one more thing about the philosophy and that is the the uh the formula the powerful formula this means that getting the operation means being cured so when he thought he got the operation he was cured getting the injection means cancer goes away so when he thought he got the miracle cure he did being on the side of the road in the middle of the night, uh, work, meaning that this working out means that a gas station shows up. Needing a friend, but in a working out situation, that situation, needing a friend, and, a, and the fact that it's working out, this means that you get a friend to help you get over your shyness. This means that every single thing that's ever occurred the tree grew because there was a seed planted in the ground. This, a seed in the ground with the water, means a tree grows here. This means that. Being hungry means eating. Seeing a stop sign when you're driving means stopping. Every, this means that. And by the way, let me give you another meaning. Learning the God power philosophy, which is this, means becoming an empowered creator. It has absolute authority over your reality. You become the master of your fate. You become fearless, ultra-confident, and unstoppable. You figure out what you want and you get it. Period. No exceptions. None. You're a creator being. Oh, it doesn't exist. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Not to a uh, creator being. Not to a follower of the God power philosophy that realizes the power that they wield. And have embraced it and use it effectively and powerfully. Okay, so that's the God Power Philosophy, the four points. Again, it's simple, it's only four points, but it's the most powerful philosophy that has ever been created in the history of reality. So, we're going moving on. Our next thing we're going to get to in the training is the checking system. And boy, oh boy, that is going to be something. That is... That is going to make it possible for you to know the truth of everything in the universe. Everything that's ever been and things that will be. Every choice you make, you will be able to check with the COC, which is the center of creation, the center of consciousness, the consciousness of creation. That's the COC. We're going to talk about that when we get to the next section and we're also going to talk a lot about the coc when we get to the structure and the history of the universe okay information for this video that you've just watched is available in the training guide in the training guide, you'll find new information, which is information that has been added to the course since the videos were made. You will have announcements. This will be speaking engagements, special trainings, boot camps, that kind of thing. You will have video links. These are links to all of the online videos, wherever they may be. Then you have download links. All videos online will have available downloads. And all of the download links for the videos and all of the other materials will be listed in the training guide. 
you'll have transcripts. Eventually, all of the videos online will have transcripts in all of the major languages. Of course, the English will be first. You will have training illustrations. These are the illustrations that are in the videos and they are available as PNGs and JPEG pictures, illustrations as well, downloadable. Also available in the training guide for download are the animations. These are the illustrations, animated segments. These are GIF files. In the training guide will also be resources. These are links to other websites, other locations, other materials that are available to further your training in the God Power philosophy. Also listed in the training guide are services, special services that are available to you as a follower and practitioner of the God Power philosophy. There will be contact information. We'll list where to get in touch with me and how to do so. And of course, there'll be much, much more. The training guide will be continually updated as new videos are added and as new videos are uploaded. The training guide will be in the McKim Revelation download folder on Mediafire. In that download folder, not only will you find the training guide, the most current updated version of the training guide with all the latest, most up-to-date links in it, but you'll also find all of the downloads for pictures, illustrations, transcripts, documents, videos, and everything else that goes with the training. The full link to that folder is on the bottom here. Mediafire.com folder slash 9D2Q7BZY6YS5. Of course, that's a long link. And rather than having to type that entire thing in, there are two shortcut URLs that you can use, and you can use either one www.tinyurltiny url.com forward slash McKim Revelation M C K I M R E V E L A T I O N. You type that into your browser and it will take you right to the download folder. Once you're at the download folder, there is a button you can push to download everything in the folder. Each folder has the ability to download everything in it. My wish for you. With this training, may you learn what you need to learn to become who you want to be and get what you want to get and live the life you want to live for as long as you want to live it. So be it and so it shall be. Pause this video if you need more time. Let your quest for knowing continue.